This is a rich tradition here at the University of Tulsa, no question about it, a tradition forged by the stoicism of Clarence Iba, the steady hand of Ken Hayes, the 40 minutes of hell from Nolan Richardson, the, the fire of Tubby Smith, and the utter brilliance of Bill Self, and of course many other coaches down the line through the years. And so today we will welcome to the TU family a new head coach and a new era, and we can't wait, right? Can't wait for this new era. At this time, let's introduce University of Tulsa President Brad Carson. Good afternoon. Welcome to the University of Tulsa, to Reynolds Center. Congratulations to our women's team. We loved your season. And congratulations to you all for being here. Today we begin an exciting new chapter in the extraordinary history of Tulsa Golden Hurricane men's basketball. This leadership change that we see today is in fact part of a larger renaissance that is happening here at TU. Over the past 16 months, we've done so much at the university, introducing a new strategic plan, welcoming more than uh, new college deans across the university, appointing a new provost, and of course signing um, our athletic director, Rick Dixon, to a permanent role to help guide our athletic programs. And just last July, I myself became the president of the University of Tulsa. <laughs> These moves and many more are redrawing the horizon of possibility for the University of Tulsa. They are also extending the tradition of changing with the times, developing outstanding talent, and partnering with this great city that gave the university its name. The connection of the past and the future is the very nature of what historians might call a renaissance, linking what was with what can be. We take our best traditions and we remold them for the future. This year is the start of that renaissance for the University of Tulsa, and today, we are elated to launch a renaissance of Tulsa Golden Hurricane men's basketball. As we welcome our new head coach, Director Dixon will do those honors in just a moment. But let me say also that as we think about new possibilities, we must remain inspired by our best traditions, the spirit and drive of coaches, staff, and players from the days, as Bruce said, of Nolan Richardson, Tubby Smith, Bill Self. These men are on the Mount Rushmore of TU men's basketball. But as all of you know, Mount Rushmore has four faces. And today we have an empty slot for our new coach, who I feel very confident will someday join those great basketball coaches in the history and lore of the University of Tulsa. All of us are committed to building a future worthy of that glorious past, and we are counting on all of you, the city of Tulsa, the Tulsans, to come share that excitement. Welcome to the Renaissance. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce TU's Director of Athletics, Rick Dixon. Well, good evening. Nice, nice to see you all again. I think the last time we saw each other in here was a 65-foot three-pointer. So, um, set, set the tone for continued excitement. I want to echo uh, what Bruce mentioned, uh, Brad as well, too. Can't, couldn't be more proud, actually. Uh, it was about this time a year ago, I was standing a few feet further behind introducing a new TU basketball coach. And talking to the young men in the locker room before, the, before this uh, was saying very similar to what I've just gone through the last 10 days, looking for a lot of the same qualities. Couldn't be more pleased what Angie, you, your staff, and my young ladies, uh, how you've represented us, yourselves, to you, all of us, put excitement in your program like you have like never before. Thank you. You know, as usual, the ladies are always the smartest, and I got to see them last in, um, in Fort Worth, and coming back, driving back to Tulsa, 
uh, knew what I was in store for, and a couple of them pulled me aside. I said, don't worry about it, Rick. It's not hard. Just find another Angie. So <laughs> did my best, ladies. So uh, look, here, you know my history. You know how I feel about this school, about this city. Uh, I'm a son. I'm a product of it. Uh, and for a lot of reasons, came back uh, to get us back here. Uh, just like what happened last year and the biggest turnaround in women's basketball and the same thing is going to happen after today. I told the young men in the locker room, uh, look, they've got choices. Uh, they made a good choice when they committed here. They have to make another choice. But to remember this, this is the first day of TU men's basketball getting better. It starts now. So. I'm not the one you want to hear from, uh, but just quickly would tell you the things that you would expect, the things that we value here, character, uh, people that appreciate what this university is, what it's always been, uh, the history, the intertwinement in this city. We've always been here. We represent the best of this city. Uh, th those things were important, somebody that valued that, somebody that brought the highest character, somebody that was dedicated to the development of student athletes. That's what we've always been. We've been a developmental program. Not many of us have come in as five stars, but a lot of us have left as five stars. We're a developmental program. You heard Brad, he actually stole my line, the Mount Rushmore thing, but the, uh, those three guys, you know what I told the team, in the last 42 years, 10 men's coaches since 1980 have left here with winning records. Think about that. Six of those went on to other places. Three of those won national championships from this school. Not many people can say or schools can say those two things. Ten years, ten coaches, 42 years of winning records. Three coaches that left here and won national championships. I found out firsthand the last ten days the Tulsa basketball brand is still strong in the country. Still very strong. But I had to find the person, the people that understood in this metro area of 1.2 million, only half a percent either have gone to school, in school, or work here. Think of that, half a percent. Well, you can do the math and understand the dynamic. We have to have people that compel, engage, and become part of this community. That's always been the success. Those three on that Mount Rushmore did that the best. They were all different, all different styles, different people, but they were Tulsans. And I know this about my city. If they believe that you participate, value, and enjoy this city, they'll embrace you. And that's who I found. It is a coach with the highest pedigree. He understands it. He sat on the bench in his first foray as a co young graduate assistant when we were at our peak. He went to places that, much like us, that went to their one and only Final Four in their history and was an integral part of it. He went to a place that really didn't have a history in men's basketball and helped create one, and, and very much like the University of Tulsa in a city where most people weren't connected. One of the best stories I heard was from Coach Larinaga at the University of Miami who said, the, the running story each week of the staff was, what promotion is Eric going to come up with next? Because we've had Cuban night. We've, we've had dog show night. We've had kids' birthday party nights. So I like that kind of creativity because we've got to connect again with Tulsa. It's the brand of our program. It's the brand of our school. It's the brand of the city. So I'm proud to introduce to you the person that I found that will do that, Eric Conkel. Yeah, thank you.
Thank you very much. It is great to be back in Tulsa. Thank you very much, everybody. I want to say thank you to everybody for being here and for those watching online. Um, thank you, President Carson and Rick Dixon, the Board of Trustees here at TU for their confidence in me and bringing me back to Tulsa on behalf of my family. We are absolutely thrilled and excited to be here with you, grow our family here in Tulsa and be a part of this TU tradition while building a first-class basketball program that, that can withstand the test of time. And we are super thrilled about that. Uh, we, can't, we couldn't be happier to be here, and we cannot wait to connect with everybody starting tonight, being able to hang out with one another. Of course, we're going to be getting settled here over time, but we cannot wait to connect with this community in a special way. Uh, I'd like to introduce my family here. Uh, this is my wife, Megan. Yep. Uh, we met in college. Uh, we were both participating in basketball. She's the real player in the family. Unless you ask our children. Um, this is Ethan in the red and it's his 13th birthday today. And then we have Ryan who's 10 years old as well, right here. But we are absolutely uh, looking forward to diving into this community with both feet. And, and becoming a part of Tulsa and everything that's great about it. As I came to campus the other day and then around the city, it's amazing how things have changed for the better. There's so many new things here and we're super excited. Um, I want to also take the opportunity to thank Louisiana Tech University um, and the Ruston community there for all their support during our time there. Dr. Geis, our president, Tommy McClellan that hired me, Dr. Eric Wood that supported us as athletic director the last two years, Steve Davidson, uh, and countless others. And my greatest thank goes out to the players that I was so fortunate to coach. Uh, their trust in me and my staff and, our, and their, just their ability to uh, allow us to, to coach them and, and go on that journey with them. I, I love all you guys and will be forever grateful. During the interview process, I was asked a question and I was asked, why to you? First, this is the place where it really all started for me in coaching. This was a transformative time for me. I came here just interested in trying to become a basketball coach and trying to figure out what that was like. I left here with an invaluable experience of seeing a university, a group of special players, and a community all intertwined and aligned to create something special. And that's what we're here to do again. Community, the university, special players, all working together and to achieve something great. Second, there's great potential here. You can see it. This program has rich tradition with a history built on tough players and a passionate fan base from this city. And I've seen it firsthand. And together, all of us, we, we can do it again. Our goal is to challenge consistency for championships, get to the NCAA tournament, in advance. That's the things that we talk about, getting better every day and doing that. And the third reason why, Meg and I are very excited about raising our boys here. This is a great place. We've got friends that live here, friends that have moved here, friends that have lived here their entire lives. This is a wonderful place. And again, we want to jump in with both feet and be a part of this community with you. Earlier today, I met with our players and laid out my vision. And, and really, I just can't wait to get started. This is great. I love this, but I can't wait to get on the floor with these guys. We got a terrific group and a lot of potential in this. But this is, this is the number one thing for us before we talk about the game. We will be a program full of people, players, coaches, staff, that have great energy, terrific commitment, and are gonna do things in a first-class manner. We're gonna play with great juice. We're gonna be a group of guys that are constantly trying to get better, and then we're gonna behave ourselves and represent this community in a first-class way. We will be aggressive on defense, everybody. In the full court, in the half court. Yeah. 
We want to create opportunities in transition. The first seven seconds of basketball is the greatest time to catch somebody sleeping. And we want to do everything we can on the defensive end in both half court and full court to create those opportunities for our team to have a group of versatile guys, a number of guys that can push the basketball. We want guys that can attack the rim. We want to be able to open up the floor with space and shoot the three-point shot. If we are in the half court, we want to be able to play with great freedom, to be able to get downhill into the paint, and then make great decisions. To play a free-flowing style where guys are using their best gifts to attack this game of basketball. We will play with great unselfishness, searching for the best shot, and play in a way that is fun to watch, but also wins. And that's what this is about. This will also be a player's program. This is about the players. And our focus will be entirely on them. We are here for our players, both present and past. For the people that are watching and here, if you're a former player, we want you back. Our practices are open. Our office doors are open. We're going to be reaching out. We want to be able to hear from you and your experiences and support this program and tell the stories of your time here. Our staff will be completely focused on the development of our players. Like Rick mentioned, this is a developmental program. We want guys that are committed to getting better, no matter where their spot is on the team, that they are focused every single day to become the best version of them on the court, in the classroom, and in the community. This will also be our city's team. Our staff will work relentlessly to recruit players from our region, as well as, as, well as recruit fans from our city. So we can create a unified toughness and togetherness on game days. We need all of you now. I can't tell you how excited I am to be here. And to be your head coach, after coming here 22 years ago just trying to, to figure this out, I'm always going to keep trying to figure it out. But I'm going to give everything I've got, our family, our staff, our players, to give you something exciting to watch, something to cheer on, and something to be very proud about. Appreciate you all for being here. Go to you now, all right? reconnect and get the fans there and get this build up to kind of have that buzz in Tulsa again. Yeah, I think there's a number of ways, Nathan. I think first, again, you, you want to have a, a really competitive team on the floor and play a style that's fun to watch but also successful. Those things can, they happen through recruiting, they happen through development. We're going to work very hard at those things. But then there's also an organic grassroots effort of connecting with people. And I want to lead that charge. I'm going to lead that myself with our family, you all will see us all over town. It's just the way we operate. Our staff and their families, our players. And then we wanna just be able to get everybody to feel invested in that they have a role in this too. Yourself, your neighbor, to bring people along to come to these games because I've seen this place rocking. I tell a story, I've got two great friends from high school that came here when I was a student assistant and I had a manager's pass list and I, um, I put their name on the list. And after the game, we won the game and they came down and they were mad. They're like, Eric, you had us up in the nosebleeds. And I said, well, I, I might be able to use my cloud to get better tickets right now, but I'm hoping that they're pushing the nosebleeds again. We gotta get this place full, we need all your help. Bill Haston, Tulsa World uh, Coach. No pressure, by the way, you're on the Mount Rushmore. Brad Carson's rep, Mount Rushmore already. Uh, but you see what the Tulsa women have done with the energy of a new coach, what the Iowa State men have done with the new coach, and the portal is undeniably a big deal now. So what is the reasonable expectation? What is a reasonable expectation for right out of the gate? 
Well, we, what we put on in expectations is we're looking for great improvement. I told the guys in the locker room that first, we're, we're going to get started on the floor next week, and we're going to look for measurable improvement from each and every one of them through the course of this spring. And then with any holes on the roster, we're going to look to, to find ways to improve our team through transfer portal, through it could be junior college, high school, uh, any type of thing, just based on best available, how they fit, and how we can improve. For, for things on the court, what we're looking for is, is be process oriented with how are we defending? We're going to start there first. We've got to be able to defend. The best teams defend. And then how can we use that on offense? We're going to evaluate that every single day. Where that turns into wins and losses, I know where we want to be, but we're going to put it on that process first. Caden McFarland, 2 News, Oklahoma. Um, you mentioned it being a transformative time for you, just the one year you spent here in 2001. If somebody had told you back then that you'd be here today in this position, what would you have thought? Oh, I would have thought they were crazy. You know, the, the, I, I remember clearly we won the NIT and came, in, came into here, and this place was packed, cheering on that team. It was an unbelievable group. I was a small college player, and I jumped right into this. And what I mean by transformative is it opened my eyes up to so many different things. And I, I was very fortunate, even just that one year, and I know, I know Coach Peterson was here that one year, I, I joined him at Tennessee, but that coaching staff gave me so much responsibility as a young guy to just to learn and feel this. And then the people in this community, several of you that were there are here now, um, so appreciative of you then and certainly now, it was awesome. And, and um, that's really what drew me back here too, to have that feeling again. Coach Bryce McKenna's Tulsa World. Um, I just want to ask you, in the past eight years, TU has only signed one local high school prospect. I know you've already addressed it, but I just kind of want to ask you again, what is your strategy to drawing local talent and keeping it to you? So our strategy, we call it, in our staff, we call it the bread basket model. The bread basket's in the middle of the table, that's the center. And your center always wants to, you always want to be in, in, your, in your region. And what I mean by region, is as close as possible. We start inside out. Um, in my Louisiana Tech team this last year, 12 of our 14 guys were from within five hours of campus. We had four guys from Louisiana, which was the most that the program had had in a long time. Back in 2006, the George Mason team that went to the Final Four, all five starters were, for, were from within two hours of campus. Uh, when I was at Miami, we couldn't really recruit east, west, or south, because those were fish, you know? so. <laughs> We, we had to go elsewhere. But here, we're, we're going to recruit Oklahoma. We're going to recruit Texas. We're going to recruit Arkansas. We're going to get in the car. We're going to work. We're going to meet people. We're going we're to invite them to campus. We're going to show up on their campus. I think you think about your best friends. that You didn't just go to their house. They came to your house, too. So we want to be able to open up our doors. Uh, we love ball, me and my staff. We want to talk ball all day long. But even more than that, we love people. And so we're going to identify and evaluate doesn't mean our whole team will be from here. We've got to find the right guys, the right guys that can help the University of Tulsa. But we're going to look for them starting here and then branch out. Rick Corey from the Blitz 1170. Welcome back, Coach. Uh, give us a little idea about building from the inside when it comes to staff, administrative, things like that. You, you kind of have to do that new almost every time you go somewhere. So who do you have in mind already if you're willing to drop names? And where do we go from here? I'm willing, but I'm not able. Um, but we're, we're going we're gonna to look first and foremost on the guys that I've been with. And uh, I know one of them is, is in the running for the head coaching job at Louisiana Tech. And I would love that for him and his family. Um, but we're going to talk to a number of guys. But we're going to be focused first on, on the guys that are there because I've got great familiarity with them. I think this is such an important time to have consistency with a staff, messaging, so we're able to hit the ground running with our team here and also in recruiting. Uh, Coach, uh, Jonathan Husky, News on Six here in town. Um, you've mentioned a couple times now how important that first experience at Tulsa was, but to now have your name alongside, as has already been mentioned, the Mount Rushmore, Nolan Richardson, Tubby Smith, Bill Self, some of these great names in college basketball, just how does that, how does that grab you on a personal level? Well, I, I knew that when I was here too. Like the, the, the tradition here is really second to very few. And 
and just it, it's it's such an awesome responsibility and and certainly one that I'm very proud of to be standing here and, and, and be the Tulsa men's basketball basketball coach is a great honor it's a great responsibility and it's something that I don't take lightly those are incredible coaches Hall of Fame type coaches three national championships and and so many others too that have had success here um, I will say with all of that 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 means that there were some tremendous players here and and it's something that needs to be spoken that there's great players that have played this game here I think about the team that we had back in 2000 2001 the tradition of players coaches this is a basketball job and it was really attractive to me this is a basketball city too and uh, and we want to make that at the highest level again yeah coach Conkle Chris Lincoln of Oklahoma sports scene I just want to how are you going to reconnect with high school coaches in this state what is your thought on the talent at Oklahoma high school basketball well that process has already begun uh, we, we reached out just by, by email to every single high school coach in the state to invite them here. Um, while we reached out by telephone to, to certain guys, we're going to get to them all. Uh, we're going to got to be able to have FaceTime with people. That's the way you connect. Um, this, this trust and relationships isn't exactly one speed date. You've got to be able to sit with people. You've got to be able to talk with people. There's a number of things that we want to do from camps and clinics and just really face-to-face -face conversations that we can have here then also uh, on their campus as well and we're, we're working on the logistics of that but our doors are open for people watching people listening we want to be the most inclusive staff in the entire country um, I'm gonna be visible I'm gonna be available and I'm gonna be very inclusive as the head coach here I heard that uh, so the building was essentially brand new when you were here, the arena, I mean, and, and today, if anything, it's better than it was then you know, with amenities and uh, renovations and whatever. But, but do you feel like you have everything you need with regard to the facilities and all that uh, coming in? You, it's like a, lot of, a lot of new coaches have a wish list. I need this and this and this. But do you feel like you're fully outfitted from a facility standpoint to, to do what you need to do? Well, from what I've seen in here, Bill, this is awesome. Um, this, this rem I mean, this feels the same that it was. Of course, you've got the lights and everything, but um, what was fun for me, this is the first time in 22 years that I've been in this building and walking through the locker room and remembering the way the layout was, and it's extraordinary, the work that's been done here, the support by the administration, um, the weight room renovation, incredible the scoreboard yeah now this is not the same this is not the same I, I feel like I'm watching the Cowboys right like this huge so there are things here that are attractive um, attractive to recruits and certainly attractive for a game day experience and we want to be able to maximize everything okay that's our final question coach congratulations and I would say I would say that Coach is 1-0 on the season. He just won the press conference. What do you think? <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. <laughs> okay, so what's going to happen next is Coach is going to go off and do some one-on-ones here on the side, but obviously we, we welcome you to, to go around the other side of the curtain because the meet and greet will be coming up. But wait a minute. Wait, wait. We got one more thing to do here, don't we? Um, Ethan, this is your 13th birthday, and guess what? We have... A cake by the Spirit Squad. All right, everybody, let's, let's all go. Happy birthday. Ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ethan. Happy birthday to you. How about that, huh? And Ethan, you will never forget your 13th birthday, I guarantee you. And don't expect this every year. All right, that concludes this portion. Coach is going to go off and do some individual interviews, but he'll be back on the other side of the curtain. Coach, you have anything more to say? Just excited to be here, everybody. Jump on board with us, all right? Thank you.
Head Coach Eric Conkle, thank you. Bruce, that was great.